In this group, the solution for the most part tended to be don't do any chaplains at all. The way to deal with this is to let people um, do their religious thing um, off, off base, uh, to find the religious group that they like the most and engage with that religious group. And the evidence that the separationists had for problems with this policy are a couple. Uh, the article mentioned um, that uh, there's some famous cases at the Air Force Academy, for one, where it was clear that a, Christ, a pro-Christian environment had, had been generated by a, a number of the senior staff there, which uh, made atheists and Muslims, and even some Christians, to feel that they were being pressured and that they were also being, um, that they were being docked for not being involved in those activities. So that was one kind of camp that came up. The other camp, um, this accommodation is camp, looks at religion a little differently. Um, they say things uh, like, well, religion can help people cope. So if you're in the military and you're doing these things that most people in daily life aren't called to do, well, religion may be really important for people to help cope in, in that environment. Or some people said things like, well, religion, uh, and this is a very Durkheimian argument, bonds. So uh, there was one quote Dominique said, well, without a cha being in the military without a chaplain is like having a team without one of your best players. So this could be, this basically com comes from the base of assuming that, um, that for the most part the United States is a religious country and because religion is a part of the country uh, and part of, of groups that gather in the country, well then is it important to have it represented and supported uh, when, when team building for, for the military. The solution that this group offered were a couple. First off was individuals could opt out. So yeah, if there's a prayer, if there's a religious service and you're not religious or you're not of that religion, you can just kind of close your mind off or kind of sit in silence and, and, and if you will, go along with it. Another solution was what I call the uh, percentage or representative solution, which is let's try and cover every single religious group um, and to make sure every single religious group is represented. So you can see this clearly falls kind of a com along the accommodationist camp, which, which sees not that uh, it reads into the, uh, the First Amendment documents, not the exclusion of religion uh, and not the establishment, but making sure that individuals are able to exercise uh, their religious pre preference. Uh, and what's interesting in all this is that, again, these sorts of strategies are process strategies. Uh, so uh, trying to get the percentage of chaplains right is something that would always have to be kind of uh, reformed and revised as uh, religious groups change in our society and as people come in and out of the military. Evidence of this is uh, of, of actually um, some pagan groups have tried to get chaplain rep chaplaincy representation in the military and until this point the military has said no, that's not a religion uh, that, we are, that we are going uh, to support. Uh, and, and have a chaplain for. Um, so as you can see, there's no real resolution between these two camps, and as the article said, the military seems to be a particular area where the Supreme Court is not going to get involved, so it just may be that again we see kind of uh, this boundary process continue to, to, to kind of play out over time. Now let me make some comments about civil religion, which we're reading for uh, for for next week, uh, and then that'll be it for this week. And everybody can uh, can uh, take the rest of the weekend off and relax a little bit. Next week's readings are pretty heady. There's really two readings. Um, one is a classic reading by Robert Bella uh, on civil religion, where he ba he basically defines and introduces the concept. Uh, and then the reading for Thursday. Um, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in next Tuesday's lecture, is about how um, the Pledge of Allegiance can be seen as um, not necessarily religion invading the state, um, but state actually uh, co-opting religion, and we'll talk more about that next week. But let me say a few words in general about the civil religion argument. First off, be sure to read McGuire pages 202 to 208. Those kind of hone in and tell you what it what the civil religion idea is gives you a little background uh, before you jump into the the essay by Robert Bella now this essay is a little is a little bit clunky uh, and can seem a little bit dated at the end because he's writing in the late 1960s looking back over American history 
trying to make sense of this idea of civil religion and what it might mean for uh, his time. Uh, he is one of the great uh, American sociologists. Um, but but so so kind of go easy on that part because that 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 part dates this piece. I mean, he wrote it forty years ago. But try and get into the reading. Uh, pay attention to what are some of the beliefs, symbols, and rituals that he is talking about in civil religion, um, and see and pay attention to what civil religion in his argument accomplishes for the United States of America. And in your anal analysis, really dig into part of the argument. Uh, uh, Argue with Bella if you want. Did he miss something? Did he get it right? Are there other themes that could be there? Does civil religion really do for the country what, what he says it does? Or you might even think about what is civil religion like in the last 40 years or in the last 10 years. So let's really get those analyses kind of firing again. Um, you guys have been doing a very good job and I just want to keep encouraging you along. But let me say a few things in general about civil religion. So we spent this week talking about these institutions church and state. The civil religion argument kind of blurs that distinction a little bit and is very much based in kind of a Durkheimian, uh, who we know well, analysis of a community. The community being the United States of America and Durkheim, as we know, would basically be looking for what are the rituals, ideas, and, and behaviors that bond a group together and what is it that those do for keeping the group going and helping the group to understand itself. So Bella uses that Durkheimian approach to figure out to figure out the religious vision of the United States of America. Now some of this religion, uh, this religious vision, is an is some actual kind of uh, Judeo-Christian themes as Bella talks about. But don't confuse that uh, those Judeo-Christian themes with evidence of a particular church group influencing the state. No, instead what Bella is saying is like, look, well, there are some particular religious tradition roots in our country, but what I'm trying to say is, is, is or what Bella is trying to say is to look at those, but then also to look at the history and the rituals and the ideas of the country, particularly as seen through a number of presidents and through a couple of documents, and to try and get a sense of how that kind of uh, overarches or brings together the country as a whole in this phrase that he calls civil religion. And what's important is he's not arguing that there is some group out there called civil religion that decided to make a civil religion. Instead, he's using this Durkheimian style of analysis to say every group uh, and in this case, the country, the United States of America, has these religious elements to it. And, and he wants to make sense of these and see what they are. Um, I think that's probably all I need to say right now about the civil religion argument, except to say kind of enjoy this reading, kind of dig into it, uh, pay attention to it. And in your summary, get the, the main kind of broad points, especially keeping in mind what Durkheim would want us to look at. Uh, and then I'm going to read those essays. Um, and then uh, try and give you kind of a really good substantial, uh, substantial uh, lecture uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday about civil religion so that then for our Thursday reading uh, about the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, we can get into more of a discussion. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, if you have any questions or problems, please be sure to be in touch sooner than later. Thanks. Bye-bye. An example of how, um, how th this camp has argued in the past is the 1962, uh, which was the first decision at the Supreme Court level that ruled against the legality of school prayer. 